Hi guys, I'm Patrick. I'm Adam. And this is Clock, Stock, and Barrel. For the last time. That's right, guys. The show's over. <laughs> Just kidding! No, no. Don't worry, guys. We're going to keep continuing to deliver you a consumer's opinion on everything watch-related, but we are going to do it in a slightly different way moving forward. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll let you know in an Stay announcement tuned. next week. Yeah. Our next episode, you guys, will it'll kind of all make sense, and uh, we're really excited to bring this announcement to you. But first... Yes. We have... Just like the title would suggest. The Seiko Tuna. You've heard about it in the news. It's been rumored. You've seen it. You've probably eaten it. The Seiko Tuna. Specifically, in this case, the SBBN033. Oh, this probably is probably one of the most polarizing watches ever. Yeah. A quartz hockey puck is basically what it is. Oh, it's so <laughs> lovely, though. Some people hate it, some people love it, some people are on the fence about it. Maybe not. I think it's more of a love and hate kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, one of my favorite dive watches of all time. Yeah, you've had a. This is your oh, man. third version Second. of. So oh, third, yeah. Because you had the. Ninja. I've had the 35, which is the stainless steel with the black the bezel. Black then I had the Ninja, which is all black. And then now. Kiggity black. I have the best one of all. I honestly think this is the best one. I think it looks the coolest. Uh, and there's a lot of options out there, guys. And so this is a modern tuna. Now, they've been doing this uh, this case and this design for a long time now. And of course, they've modified it over the ages. Um, this is it in its best form, honestly. So there again, there are variations. But uh, this dial face is new to this model year. And then you have the Prospects logo on the crown. And you have enhanced Lumabrite. And you have a different handset. So if you've seen Tunas, this is what a modern one looks like. And mm -hmm. we're, we're going to get some of the tech specs out of the way for you before we give you our opinions on the piece personally. Uh, so Adam, if you want to you sing those off for us, I, and you probably know most of the facts on this one. Yeah, um, so the biggest thing is it has the 7C46 movement, and yes. it's obviously a quartz movement, as you guys can see it it's taken away. Um, it's yeah, there's the, 7C. There's a pretty cool case back, and those dates all around it mm -hmm. are uh, to monitor when the quartz battery was changed. Mm. Um, so it's accurate to within 15 seconds a month, but I've had this for quite a few months now. I don't know, maybe like three months at this point, I think. Mm -hmm. And it looks to me right now like it's running at plus three or four seconds, which is pretty awesome. Um, has hard light crystal. It's slightly domed as well, which makes it look pretty cool on oh the wrist. Gosh. And you guys, it just makes it look pretty cool in general. If you can see this, how it... It distorts the uh, dial face, that bauble in the glass. Yeah, it's very vintage sort of looking. Absolutely beautiful. What's nice though, and unlike a vintage watch where the crystal usually bubbles far out from the, the casing of the watch, it does bubble out, but only ever so slightly from the top, and you can barely see it there. So you don't have to worry. It is hard left, but you don't have to worry about it getting scratched up easily, at least. Uh, just so you guys know. You have the crown at four o'clock position. Um, which isn't unique to Seiko, but it's, it's great on this piece because it's actually directly aligned with the four o'clock. I hate when it's slightly askewed. This is just cosmetically a nice thing to see. Mm -hmm. uh, and overall, you know, again, the, those polarizing looks you were talking about, uh, you either love it or you hate it. Um, there's a variety of shrouds. I feel like there's aftermarket shrouds for this too. Yeah, there are. So the SBBN has the polished one. Mm -hmm. um, unlike the SBBN 035, which has the uh, brushed, brushed yeah. one. You have like a sandblasted finish with some models. So there's yeah. a cool range of, um, I guess, diversity and uh, customizability with this. Because yeah. I know groups sell, I feel like you get ceramic uh, shrouds mm -hmm. too, if you want. Yeah. Um, so it's 48 millimeters, uh, but it wears way, way smaller than that because there are absolutely no lugs at all. You guys can see how that rubber band is, is kind of shifted right into... <laughs> confirm that. <laughs> right into confirm the... Uh, you said 48? 48. Let's see, let's see. Oh, a little more like 46. 46. Cool, let's, no, no, 48. 48, 48 okay. okay. Um, it, has, it has a really nice uh, brand new silicone Seiko band. Uh, I think the new bands that they have on the turtles and the tunas are awesome. 14.7 uh, millimeters is the claim thickness, weight of 125 grams, um, anti-magnetic, 300, mil 300 meter water resistance, and a five-year battery life that has been recorded by many to be much, much longer than that. Yeah. I've, I've uh, read numerous cases on the forums where people say, 
uh, the battery has lasted for two years or seven years, eight years. I think I've heard of nine years even, uh, which is really, really badass. Um, and what's really cool about this thing too, it, it has an EOL end of life um, so warning. The, yeah, this is so, metering. Basically, so the second hand will tick every other second. Every other second. Yes. So, you know, this is obviously made to be the ultimate diving watch. Um, so you don't want your quartz watch just stopping in the middle of, you know, while you're underwater. <laughs> so that end of life uh, indicator, I don't know how long it takes for, maybe a couple months or so. Mm -hmm. um, we'll let you know that you need to change that before you go on your next dive. So Seiko Tuna, the really cool part of this is, I mean, most of this is history, right? It's mm -hmm. not just the polarizing looks, but yeah. um, it's back. It's a purpose-built diver. Exactly. So the, the first Tuna came out in 1975, and that was an automatic and they switched to the quartz in 1978, but the, was it the same movement as it is in the modern? Case? Uh, it was a little bit different. Okay. The seven C, I don't know the different iterations of the actual quartz battery itself, mm -hmm. um, but I know the tuna was seven years in the making um, because there was a diver. Obviously, the Japanese are perfectionists, right, with all their designs and everything and their quality. Um, there was a say, there was a diver that emailed Seiko, or not emailed, this was like back in the 60s, yeah, so yeah. he sent them, <laughs> sent them a, a letter. Carrier. Yeah, yeah. A um, carrier bird. Yeah, carrier bird, and let them know that they're, due to the helium in deep dives, the um, crystals were popping off of uh, the Seiko divers. Correct. So Seiko took this to heart, and seven years of development later, they came out with the tuna. Um, so like I said, automatic in 75, then it switched to quartz, and you have many, many different iterations. I feel like there are some modern automatic variants, now I forget the reference numbers. Yeah, the they, spring drive models. They're more of a novelty, I, the spring drive is their, the, the top end model, obviously. The spring drive offers yeah. durability, accuracy. Emperor and, Tuna is a spring drive. Yes. Um, and they also have thousand meter quartz versions of this, which is Correct. the Emperor Tuna. Those are, that's one hit. Those are a little bit bigger. 52 millimeters, yeah. yeah. Which that's you know that's four millimeters breathing that's pretty big. It's um, pushing it, but as you guys saw from that wrist shot, it's surprisingly not as large on the wrist as you. Yeah, definitely not. And that's because these the, these just hidden lugs. Um, so the lugs are actually under that shroud, and they don't add to the overall uh, width of the watch in any direction. So you basically have a forty-eight millimeter watch sitting on your wrist, and, and no matter how you look at it. Yeah. Um, in, in my general rule of thumb, at least for me, with a seven and a quarter inch wrist, are making sure that the watch's dimensions never extend past 50 millimeters. Right. Because usually that's when it begins to jut off my wrist personally. Um, so it is a very good look for most uh, men and or women with, with larger wrists. You're, you're going to get away with it just fine. Uh, it's certainly still a big watch though. And I suppose I'll start with a few of my... Um, Opinions first because I don't own yeah, one and, and I, I I definitely will consider it and I have considered it multiple times This is actually the model. I, I like the most and I'll explain why in a second um, But this let's start with the strap is the strap is it, it's it says marine master on the dial They're not kidding you get um, all the accoutrements you'd expect with one of their top-end divers, and that's what the Marine Master moniker is. Uh, this rubber strap is phenomenal. One of the best rubber straps uh, to come with any Seiko diver, most certainly, and, and, and probably one of the best rubber straps I've seen come with any diver, personally. Um, you know, let, barring a few Italian-made rubber straps, those Bonetto Centurinis that are... Um, you know, they come out with a few different brands, actually quite mm. good too. Mm. But this rubber strap's phenomenal. It's just a joy to wear on the wrist. I love the steel keeper uh, and this beautiful, it's an unsigned buckle, uh, but it does the job. It's very nice on the back end. You'll see the Seiko logo. Um, the case itself, again, it wears smaller than it appears, but it is still rather large. But because of this sort of flat profile of the case back, it's actually very, very comfortable on the wrist. And that little bit of a bump, um, excuse me, from the case back, uh, makes sure that the crown doesn't dig into your wrist either. So all around, extremely comfortable on the wrist. Again, these shrouds are, uh, I will say there's a level of customization because people do sell aftermarket shrouds, but the stainless steel one's great. It's very, very traditional. A lot of early divers were just polished 
high polished stainless steel. And uh, if, if you're like me and you like uh, do-it-yourself projects, then this is the easiest one to fix up and make look new. Because if there's any scratches or wear on this, you can just take a Dremel or any sort of rotary tool and fix it right up. So I think this is a good shroud to get with a package. One of the reasons I like this particular model, but also this insert. So this insert is, uh, is it aluminum or steel? Uh, you know what? That I do not know. Well, all Either this... way, it's pretty badass, I'll well, tell you that much. <laughs> it's very badass, it's brushed, it <clears throat> looks aesthetically pleasing, but the best part of the shroud for me is that it, whereas a black insert would sort of extend the dial and make it appear larger, this silver insert keeps the dimensions just a little bit smaller, if that makes sense. It makes mm -hmm. it look in appearance like a smaller watch, as opposed to having something with a black bezel, which sort of extends the dial. And I'll just give you this as an example. And these look almost similar in size, except this is a 36 and this is a 48. And it's because that bezel insert extends the dial. But you know, this, this Pesca sub actually does a great job of doing that with those, those minute markers all around too. So yeah. it has its secrets while the tuna has its own as well. Um, but that loom on this is insane. It is absolutely. Ugh. Insane guys. Yeah, I mean it lasts a long time, but not only that, I think it's their brightest oh, Luma Bright yet. Um, oh, let's see if we're we can charge it for them. Yeah, uh, we don't even need to like do anything. I'm just gonna try and charge this a little bit. We, we're using our studio lights here. Yeah, we're using our studio lights, and look at that. How insane is that, guys? Just a little bit of studio. Oh my like god, that. this is the first Loom shot on the channel. Right. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, it's like, very bright in this room right now. If you you can, can even tell, see so. it with a lot of light. It's the green is still coming through there. Yeah. So it's crazy. yeah, guys. The, the loom is absolutely intense. Absolutely for sure, the brightest loom I've had on any watch mm -hmm. ever, uh, ever. My my closing thoughts. It's one of the perfect grab and go quartz watches you can pick up on the market. It's one of the best quartz movements you can find for the money, and it's in a chassis that's both historically significant and just. Beautiful. I think yeah. the tuna casing is awesome, but uh, this is your third one. Your thoughts? Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I have my first two. I think the reason I, I kind of flipped the first one because I wanted something that maybe looked a little bit smaller, like you mentioned, how the dial sort of the small, uh, the bezel on this makes the mm -hmm. actual watch appear a little, appear a little bit smaller. So I went for the black to see yeah. if that would sort of diminish the size a little bit. Um, and it did a little bit, but I, I still wasn't really feeling an all black watch. Um, and I sold it, funded probably some random other watch that you guys have seen on this channel. Um, <laughs> but really missed it because I, I really missed having sort of that grab and go quartz piece. Yeah. Especially something as badass as this diver. Um, and you know, a lot of people would be like, oh, well tunas are $1,000 and $900, 800 for a quartz piece. But the really cool thing about this is the 7C46 quartz movement mm. was specifically designed for the tuna. You'll only find this, uh, that movement in the tuna. Seiko created this watch to be literally the ultimate diver. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, man, my thoughts on it. First of all, the coolest part about this watch for sure is the kanji, kanji date wheel. Yeah, uh, yeah it, so it, it also is in English, but um, of course I keep it in, uh, in Japanese or kanji, whatever, I don't know. The kanji. difference is kanji. Is, yeah. are those, is that the name of the characters or whatever? I mean, I, of that character, there's, they actually yeah. use a couple different characters, but I think that's kanji. Yeah, yeah. So, one, that. Two, uh, the actual size itself and the, sort of the combo with this this rubber is what I was yeah, really Yeah, you prefer going it on the after. rubber as opposed, because there is a bracelet. Yeah, there is a bracelet. Is it a bracelet option or they come with both? Uh, option, no, right? only, only the, S, the SBBN035, the, which is the, the dark bezel. Insert. Yeah, yeah. Um, that only comes on a bracelet. Okay. But it's basically a Marine Master, like an MM300 bracelet, bracelet. bracelet that we had without the, uh, um, sorry, no, it does have the, uh, ratcheting, ratcheting clasp oh, as well, the nice. titanium ratcheting okay. clasp. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I, there's not enough I can say about this watch. I mean, it is the perfect grab and go sort of sports watch. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? If you can, it keeps if you can amazing deal with time. the size. If you can deal with the size. If you can deal with the size. Obviously they're super, super polarizing. You know, they call the Seiko monster the monster, but this thing is like really the real me monster. the real monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's really cool about this is, is the actual user experience that you have with it. You can see the two cutouts, um, in around like shroud. 12 to 3 and then 6 to 9. Yeah, right around there. It's sort of perfect if you're, if you're right-handed and you have that on the wrist, you can just twist it like so. So the bezel action itself is a little bit loose, yeah. um, which I kind of 
I feel like the other ones I had might have been a little bit tighter. Really? You know, but I can't, I can't, I, I can't remember for sure. Um, well, the shroud helps to block any sort of oncoming blows that, that would rattle or otherwise move yeah. the bezel. So it's okay that it's a little loose. And the actual cutouts for the bezel are very, very, very unique, I think, to the tuna as mm -hmm. well. Um, you can see it's very mostly, wide, those ridges. Yeah, exactly. But there's a nice little gap between every single bezel yeah, ridge, yeah. you know? So that's uh, that's pretty cool, too. Uh, crown in four, at 4 o'clock is absolutely perfect. Screw Down Crown has the Prospects logo. Um, Whether you well. like it or not, it's interesting. They they very yeah. frequently change the logo that was on that crown before. It never had a signed crown, and then it moved on to the Seiko S. Right. And now it's because it's part of the Prospects line. It gets the uh, Prospect logo. Yeah. What and a lot of people uh, I will say hate that logo. Uh, I'm not in that camp. I actually kind of like it. Yeah. It's nice that it isn't on the dial though. In case you don't like yes. it. Um, and by the way, the literature on the dial is very minimalistic, very nice, very clean, a little bit better looking than the, the other Marine Master, the Marine Master 300. If you think yeah. that was crowded, this one actually looks really nice. Yeah, another thing too, there's, I mean, a lot of purists, not only about the X, but um, a lot of purists will say that this new redesign is uh, not very faithful to the original because mm. the old, like the SVBN 017, I think is the predecessor to this. Yeah. Um, instead of sorting ha sort of having that baton, at nine o'clock, it had sort of a big fat circle there. And I really love that aesthetic. I do too. But one of the things that the, the biggest change I think is has to do with the hands and how they have the huge broad arrow hands. Instead of those, they instead like of sort of like an like, SKX style sort yeah. of hand or like a turtle style hand. There's a model, um, I think they're, they have some field masters that have that handset still and um, you guys can you guys can mention in the comments if you don't know what yeah. I'm talking about. But there are field master tunas that have the the old style handset, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Personally, um, I like the newer handset. I it's, think it's, it's easier to change. read. Yeah. Um, and I also have I'm a big uh, Seiko Turtle fan, and those have technically the old tuna handset. So I do like having this handset as sort of you know a change of color, change of pace. What I don't like is that Seiko is starting to, no, no, I, well I do admit that this is a welcome change for the brand in this particular model. I don't like that there isn't enough diversity amongst their divers. So now, as you guys might know, they're doing a, a 62 Moss reissue, mm -hmm. right? But then along with that, they're inviting a new, because those are limited edition. I right. There's only a certain amount of those, but they have a standard version of that watch coming right. to the market as well. I think it's the SB, DC052. And which has the 4R36 and yes. also has these broad hands. But it has right? those exact same handset. And yeah. I'm not, I just, you're gonna, it, so it seems like what they're doing, if the hands are the same size, it feels like they're just stocking up and mass producing a bunch of that handset and slopping them on the same watch. Yeah. Whereas I'd prefer to have that unique styling of the older tuna if you're gonna continue with the line as such. It feels like, you're sort of, it just feels a little cheap when you know that there's there's like five different watches in their line that has the same hands. Yeah. I, I, I sort of value, I sort of value those unique features from the previous model. And let me just put it, I'll put a picture up for you guys so you can see what I'm talking yeah. about. And the dial face, I love us. Uh, even the older models have those hour markers with the outlines around them. So they're very, very eye catching, very eye drawing. Right. And it's a beautiful aesthetic. It's a very, very beautiful aesthetic that was unique to the tuna. And now, the tuna has a competitor from their own line with the same handset. It's just, yeah. it's just, it just feels disingenuous. I don't know. Yeah, no, I can, I can totally see that. I mean, otherwise it's beautiful. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, yeah. it does bug me. I, I love the new standard. I'll just say the standard 62 Moss because I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm getting that reference number right. I think it is SBDC. It's the same uh, numerics as the Sumo or the Shogun, gotcha. except it's like 52. Gotcha. I think it's what the black one is, and there's a blue one as well. Again, I'll throw a picture of that as well yeah. with the proper. Um, proper reference number cool but back to the yeah. tuna yeah yeah it's great it's a great quartz dive watch a 300 meter diver if you dive then you'll probably like it if not then you might not like it one of the cool things too uh one last note before we kind of wrap things up one really cool thing is they had um they actually took a, a darth tuna uh seiko tuna so that one has a thousand meter water resistance mm -hmm. But this kind of talks, you know, speaks to the value of Seiko and their sort of commitment to uh, quality. So, 1,000 meter water resistance, they actually strapped them to a submarine back in 2014. It was, it was four tunas total, and it was straight out of their production line, too. So, they didn't, you know, they didn't handpick specific ones. Um, and 
the Darth Tuna finally stopped ticking at something like 3,200 meters and with 1,000 meter water resistance. And then another tuna that was also a 1,000 meter water resistant, resistant stopped ticking at like 4,200 meters. So even though they're rated at 1,000 meters, the quality far surpasses what's on the dial. So even though this is only 300, I mean, not that you're ever gonna go past 300 yeah. meters, but it's kind of cool to know that I bet this thing could probably handle like a thousand meters, even though it's only a 300 meter dive. I love know? that. I love that. So if you so. wanted something that was a purpose built utility, like a, a tool, a tool of tool watches, like yeah. this is, this is one of the Kings in that department. I mean, it is very, very much purpose built and proven. I, I love that those, I've seen the video as well and I've seen the, well, there was a group that covered it. Maybe I'll leave a link for you guys so you can see what we're talking about. Yeah, for it sure. is a very interesting story. I, I read a little bit of it and it's, it's phenomenal. It's it's great when you see a brand with this level of commitment when it comes to building a quality item for their customers, and you see that among Seiko's entire line. And that's Definitely. one of those things I just really admire about the brand, let alone the tuna. But the tuna in particular, it's it's why I have a little bit of a love affair with the watch. I definitely I've considered getting a tuna for a very very long time, and. Uh, to note some of the statements I was making, I kind of want one of the older models. I think SBBN 017 is yeah. the reference I'm talking about with the, the matching sort of steel uh, bezel insert or aluminum, excuse me, but that right. silver insert. Um, again, guys, and you couldn't go wrong with any of them, but they're they're all lovely watches. They're, you know, they'd be great to own. And this is your, obviously, a keeper for you, I suppose. Yeah, for yeah. now, it's I, my, my collection in general, I have a, sort of a core, I would say, core th four pieces right now that I'm definitely not going to get rid of. And then some vintage ones that I'm sort of cycling around, but this is definitely in, in that core group really? of keepers right no now. No kidding. Yeah. The MM300 and uh, and this Tuna are sort of my mainstay. Both the main masters. Yep. Yeah, and just to give you some perspective, that, and I believe, I, I know your core consists of a Rolex Explorer and Rolex a 36 Explorer. Rolex Explorer and Speedmaster and this Moon Watch. So, yeah. You know, if you guys are new to the channel, those are pretty important watches and right. a lot of historical significance as well. So definitely speaks volumes. That lovely Seiko's in under there. a grand. And um, let me just say briefly before we end this video, you can find these on the used market easily around six hundred dollars. Yeah. I've seen lower and I've seen higher. Uh, so you'll just, sometimes you'll look out depending on whether it has the box and the papers, depending on the kind of buyer you are that may not matter to you. So yeah. definitely, definitely go for a tuna. If you've been thinking about it, I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah. They're absolutely lovely. Guys, if you like this video, odds are you like the Seiko tuna, and that's a good thing. If you disliked it, that's okay too. Guys, we've hit a, a new milestone recently, and I want to keep hitting them. If you're a longtime friend and watcher of the channel, I encourage you to subscribe to us. Uh, we have a plenty of uh, big things in our future, and as we reach those other mile markers, uh, we'd love to take you along for the ride. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. Other than that, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one. See you guys next time for the big announcement.